Here's an update on the dev. Actually, uh, cut out the extra wires. All the extra wires. This thing had some kind of auxiliary battery charger on it. I realized uh, I'm actually missing the glove box door knob is broken. I found a new chrome one on eBay that's locking, but I need another plastic one. Um, let's clean it up a little bit. 49,000 original miles. I don't know. Possible. So I think since the last video, I threw the mirrors on, been putting on the marker lights, trying to see what parts and bolts and nuts I have. I removed this, uh, what do you call this thing? I guess it's kind of like an EVAP canister tank that they came out with. So I finally figured out there's a vent line that runs from that tank up to the carb. So I'll still use that, but I'm going to weld up this hole, this hole. Here are that big old ugly metal thing. Give me some more bed space. And all the bolts were busted off. Somebody tried to take it off and snapped them all off. So no point in fixing those. Get rid of all this uh, dead weight. And uh, so I gotta put the gas tank on next. Still trying to figure out the bolt size. Actually, there's bolts in there. Should take one of those out. Uh, so on the inside here, where's the light? I just took the uh, pedal box out. So, I've done a lot of work in here since the last video. Trying to figure out. So, I got the parking brake. Let me get this light to work for me. Maybe not. So, uh, a lot of the bolts are broken. The hell on the dash. The dash looks like the dash was held in by six bolts. I figured out they were quarter by 28, I think. But all the ones along the top were rusty because, you know, the other side. So they broke. Um, same as this size. I think these are quarter by 20 also. Parking brake was busted. So I went ahead and drilled them out to 8 millimeter. Retapped them to 8.1.25. It's a little bit bigger. And it seems to work good. So now all six top bolts and the two parking brakes are all 8 millimeter. More common size. Easier to find. Bigger. Stronger. Most of this truck is metric, I guess, on the drivetrain, and all the new stuff I'm going to put in is metric, like, you know, the modern brakes and stuff. So, uh, got the cover bolted in. I've got a new boot I found. I threw away the old one. And got the overlay boot. Also, I figured out how to put the steering wheel back together. I figured out how to get this knob off. It's a push and turn. I got the column all back together with all the spacers. Then I just took it out, took the steering box out. Adjustable brake pedal. Still trying to figure out the parking brake. I think this is upside down. They just figured out. I screwed this up. I never, I never took that out on any of my trucks. So this parking brake is what I had in my 74 620 and let's see my 85 720 which I had for 10 years and then my wife's 85 720. So this is my fourth truck with this style parking brake, so my wife will be used to this. Um, I was going to put it between the seats like I did. Wait a second, mine. Did my D21 have this? My 93? Uh, I think I converted to floor shifter. I think it did. I can't remember now. Anyways, so that's staying. This air box is pretty cool. Uh, it's part of the HVAC system. The lighting in here sucks. So... You can open that, and then there's another lever it's hooked up to the dash. It's basically, a fresh air vent. I'm debating whether to keep in this. I am going to put in a modern air conditioning right here, probably from a D21, maybe a D40, maybe a D22. I don't know. We'll see. Whatever fits. This box is taking up a lot of space, and all it does is let the air in from the outside. So, I may blank it off or something, redesign it. So I need that space. That's going to be the next thing I'm going to try to fit. Actually, the next job is to uh, put in third three-point seat belts. Got all the door handles back on. I just noticed that the head roof, headliner is like, it's like brand new in here. It's like almost like gray or like a baby blue. It's only falling down a little bit right here. 
But uh, I have the rear view mirror, I have the visors. I actually found some screws that look like they go in there. Oh, let me show you the visors I found. Uh, this mirror probably was in mint shape, but it's been in a box. Throwing around, it's kind of got banged up. The original visors. Okay, light, help work with me. The original visors are in really nice shape for the age. And this is all metal on the end, there's no plastic. So I'm gonna see if I can either paint these or clean these. But this is the same color as the headliner. I was gonna do all black interior and maybe body color. Thinking of like a mint green, maybe. I haven't really 100% of the color yet. You know, all the interior painted stuff, because you'll be able to see the doors. And the A and the B pillars will be body color. So, still trying to figure out the colors. I got visors I found. Uh, still gotta get the gas tank in. Let's see, I still gotta get the gas pedal figured out. Missing the spring. Uh, I'll show you under the hood. What else have I been messing with? Got the mirrors all on. Well, that doesn't sound good. Something fell. Uh, just ordered a bearing. I'm missing one bearing, so I can't put the wheels back on. Finally found the inner bearing, which is a nightmare. I'll explain that later in another video, but I found one on eBay. So here's what it looks like under the hood. Still trying to figure out the PCB. This thing, I remember this on my old LA team. This should have a tube. This goes up to your uh, PCB valve, but it's got like, a weird plug on it. I'm not sure why this one is like this. I don't know if this is some kind of homemade plug. I think there was a T on that, I don't know. I remember that, it goes in the block. So your PCB, that goes up to your PCB. Oh, there's a PCB valve right there. So I thought that goes to that. And then uh, this goes your brake booster, which obviously this truck doesn't have, which it may have. Still don't have the fuel line that goes to the car from the pump. I did find this water line. It's like the original hose and clamps, except for this one. I don't have the fuel line from the fuel filter to the tank. It seems to be just gone. Just putting the brake lines back in, trying to figure out what brake lines I have and what I don't have. Um, brake lines gonna be the last thing I hook up. Um, radiator. I'm still trying to figure out what size bolts these are. Seems like they're all different sizes. Like somebody screwed different bolts in. Like three of the four holes are different thread pitches. I like this one actually fits 8 by 1.25, so maybe somebody retapped that one. I didn't do that, but uh, this other side doesn't. So I'm gonna have to fix those. I got the column out. I cut this extra horn bracket off that was all smashed. The next is the battery tray's gotta go. Make a smaller one. That's just way too big for modern batteries. The brakes. Been reading a lot about dual. This is the original brake single circuit. I don't. This one is frozen solid. You can get a brand new one for forty-five bucks. But I think what I'm gonna do is um, I've been reading that you can put like a 260Z dual cylinder master on here with no booster, and it works really good with modern. I'm gonna put disc brakes front and rear. So, I've read that works, but I'd like to get a booster on here for when my wife drives it, just in case. Even though she did drive a bug with manual brakes. Uh, I don't know. And I've seen that they've used, like, some people use, like, 720s or whatever. It puts, like, an extension on here so it clears the clutch. So push this thing out. So I may just put, like, a D21 Master on here. Makes sense, just use D21 parts, because I'm going to use D21 spindles, control arms, calipers. Uh, I've read some people use 620 masters, but I'm going to convert all the brake lines to metric, so... 
I don't see any point in using a 620 stuff. Um, that had a booster on it. Because that was all drum. Four-wheel drum. So anyways, I'm still trying to figure out the brakes. But most likely, plan A is... Originally, I was just going to get it running with this brake system. Uh, which I guess I probably still will. I'll probably just hook up the single or whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah, because I run through these. Still need to look those up. But I'm pretty sure the shoes are on backwards. Just need to flip those around. That side has a new bearing in it. This side had order bearing because it was missing. I'm going to put this side back together. I think I am just going to go with 18 inch Titan wheels. I only have three of these original wheels. I don't have four. I don't have good caps. They won't clear disc brakes. So these cheap aftermarket painted caps are uh, probably going to be useless. This is the heater core slash heating and air conditioning system. Scratch the head. It's pretty cool. Actually in pretty good shape. Well, so two issues. One, the heater, the ballast for the fan. Heat it up and melt the fan. So the fan doesn't spin. And then the knob is broken. The heater core hopefully is still good. Probably is. But yeah, this is probably a very slim chance it'll ever go back in the truck. Maybe there's a decorative piece until I put in the HVAC, but I'll probably just sell this on eBay for somebody that needs it, wants it. But it's pretty cool. Oh, it has the front door. This is all you see under the seat. It's actually visible. It's just a nice, simple, primitive heating system. So, literally, probably just going to sell that. I wouldn't mind putting it in for a while, but. I think while I've got it all apart, I'm gonna try to retrofit a heating and air conditioning system in here. The only concern I have with that is that if I get it all to fit, and then later on down the road I put in a newer engine and tranny and I have to modify the tunnel, is the heating and air conditioning gonna have to be moved or redesigned? Probably. But uh, I guess I'll have to redesign that. If uh, still trying to find the hood pins. Got a lot of these lights on. Got the bumper grill on. Uh, I think that's about it for now. Alright, so gas tank bolts look like they're uh, 5 16 by 24 pitch. So they're standard. Um, missing them, so I noticed that um, Eight millimeter though, pretty much basically the same size. Uh, eight millimeter by 1.25. The tap just goes right in. I just re-tap them. Just re-tap the two on the tank and the two on this rack. So now, these are all eight millimeter. So that was pretty easy. This tank is in amazing condition. Uh, yeah, I got those brackets down. The sender is only like 15 bucks new, so uh, I should take this out. Probably need a new one. I got, uh, so I think that's the vent that goes to the carb. That's the vent that goes up to the filler, I guess. I'm not sure. That's the vent that goes to the filler. And yeah, now I've got some bolts. Let's throw the tank back in. Get it out of the way. So here's the factory steering box that I had. Basically, my 620. And all these old trucks, it's a steering column and box. This fell out somehow when I was trying to put it back together to get off the trailer. But uh, it's kind of a weird design. It's got a bolt, it's a threaded bolt, a through bolt, and another bolt in the frame. These are all metric, by the way, I found out. They're all 14 millimeter head, 17 millimeter head, and whatever, it looks like a 10 millimeter, 12 millimeter bolt. Uh, the Pittman nut looks like it's 20 millimeters. It's missing. I don't have that. I do have all that end. So 
plan on taking this apart and trying to fix it. I messed up the bearings. It does actually work right now. The bearings got a little messed up. So uh plan is to take this apart and maybe see if I can find the bearings that I messed up in here. So I can use it for a short time. Uh, but I think I'm just going to replace all of this with a newer setup. Either rack and pinion or worst case a D21 box. Uh, which will mean all new mounts and stuff because these mounts are unique, let's say. I don't think the 720 box bolted on the same way, but it's been a long time since I... All I remember is my 722 wheel drive and the 724 wheel drive used the same box. I converted that truck. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to try to go to rack and pinion. But I'll need to keep this box for a short time, so i got to fix it or replace it. So it's pretty unique, old style setup. Okay, so I just re-tapped all the radiator shroud, all the radiator bolts, the eight millimeter. I don't think. Okay, so I'm actually uh, getting all the marker lights, uh, marker lights back on. These, by the way, are number eight screws, um, inch and a half long. But these front turn signals are pretty interesting. Uh, they're different than the rest. So instead of a uh, screw going in holding the housing, where's the other one? Should have lost it now. Oh, here it is. There's actually a bolt. There was a bolt in here. It was welded in, but it was broken off. So I drill it out. So there's a bolt in the corners. I think it was like six millimeter. And that actually, so there must have been a nut on the inside in here to hold the housing on. And then there's a, yeah. So there's like a, looks like a six millimeter bolt in the corners. And then I thought there was a regular, you know, screw in a clip, but it's not. There's actually a four millimeter bolt holding the lens on, four millimeter screw. So I have to retap this one, because this one, uh, Oh, messed up. The other one was fine. Luckily, I had some four millimeter bolts and figured out that's what it was. I thought it was uh, the same as the side marker lights, you know, a number eight screw. So I put clips in there, but uh, no, it's actually four millimeters by I think 0.7. Let's see if I can fix this one. Or screwed up. It's on a weird angle, too. Get these brand new pretty cheap but I'm gonna basically if these rubber seals are still good the lens are still good the only thing wrong with these is the uh the wiring looks still good I think this one may be cut the other one's not cut the only thing wrong with them is uh, a little bit of surface rust and these bolts are broken off whoever took them off the nuts all broke off so there we go that one's retapped so four millimeter what they originally were. So now I gotta find some four millimeter stainless. I have tons of three millimeter stuff from my RC trucks. I had a couple of four millimeter bolts. That's how I figured out that they were four millimeter. So I wasn't sure if they were standard or not. But uh, this is a four millimeter screw, machine screw. So that's how the lenses are held on. Interesting. So now, if this one, the threads are already still good. This has got two wires. Wires all still good. So you can actually take the rubbers off, spray paint these chrome, and put these back together. These old lenses are still good. The chrome's still good. But I've seen these brand new on eBay. So that's that. Retap the radiator, eight millimeter. Got the parking brake all hooked up, and it doesn't work. I'm just trying to figure out why it doesn't work. And I figured out why. I took this wheel off, 
and it's got no shoes. The other side does. Perfect. So surprise, surprise. I'm missing all the hardware. I think I found like one or two springs, but I'm missing that crossbar. I found the springs for like four dollars on Rock Auto. It looks like I got one spring. I think this is from the hard body. These are all the hard body. I think these are H233, not H190. I don't think I haven't. I don't have any more H190 stuff. You can see between the H233 and the H190, huge difference. Springs even a little bit bigger. So. I think I might go to a junkyard and see if I can find an H190 and like a 720 and get the rest of the brake parts so I can get the parking brake working. That's the only thing keeping this wheel from working. And I can actually have a parking brake. Because I got it all back together. I even found the gas pedal. I'm, find that. I'm missing a piece of rubber or something. somewhere around here. I got the gas pedal back together, found the spring. So that works, but there's a little sleeve in there I'm missing. Uh, and uh, I think I already mentioned, I tried to take these wipers off, but I'm missing the screws to hold the wipers on. Some kind of screws in there. I don't think I'm gonna end up taking those off. So I think I'm gonna work on the seat belt and weld up this hole is the next step. This is what the brakes are supposed to look like. This side looks like somebody just rebuilt. Looks like it's got new adjusters. Shoes look good. Everything looks good in here. Nothing's wet or anything. So uh, I just need to find out all those bars. Otherwise I gotta convert to this brakes, which I'm gonna do anyways. But, uh, I've got tons of adjusters for some reason. I don't know why I've got a bunch of brand new ones. I've got like four of them right here. Still waiting for my new bearing. This is the uh, 302. Still got a bunch of new bearings. Don't know why. Okay, so I think most people know that it seems like all the seatbelt bolts are 7 16 by 20. So I picked up a couple of nuts at the hardware store, 7 16 by 20. And um, these do fit on a couple of old seatbelt bolts. So these fit, and I already ran them through the truck. I already tried all four factory bolts and they're a little rusty. One of them was fine. Well, uh, the other three need to be traced with a tap, so I'll do that. But that just proves that uh, this brand new seatbelt that I found, it came with the truck from like 2006. I don't, don't know what brand it was from. But uh, these are 716 by 20. So now the plan is for the seatbelt, kind of measured. I want to put it about here right in this corner which will fit so the trick is uh now i gotta figure out how to drill a hole in here i got an idea on what i'm gonna do i don't think you can see this so i figured out this thing needs to be above this bar Basically, I need a hole about here. Higher is better than lower. Let's figure out what that is. We'll reference off of eight and a half inches. That should be the easy to measure on the same side. Eight and a half inches will be. I notice there's a flat spot here, like they were going to put a seatbelt here or something, because the 72 trucks do have seatbelts, three three-point seatbelts. That just seems too high. So, 
so eight and a half. Find a better way to measure this. I saw somebody gouged up this, so I can't measure from there. Looks like this is unmolested steel. So four inches from here. How about that? Four inches. Four inches from there. I'm going to put a hole right in the center. I should do the other side at the same time. pretty thin so now how am I gonna get this nut on the other side of that hole and a backing plate so I obviously need to cut a hole I was thinking I'm doing like a trap door to a hole down here and then fish it up and weld it in but it's curved so I'll figure that out Okay, so here's my idea. So I drilled a hole here. I put some tape on here. I think it's an inch and a half. I got three stripes, three layers. Then I put another layer on top. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out this piece of steel, make a new backing plate. It's probably a little bit bigger and then slide that in and then put this thin shield steel back on top. That's plan A anyways. I'm going to try to get it behind here because this will be covered by rubber. So that weld will be covered and this seal will be covered. And then you got this big, this thing will kind of hide. So I'll put the hole above it and then the strap will be here. So only, so the welds will all be kind of hidden. Even though I can sand it down, 90% of it's going to be hidden. So yeah, let's go. I was actually afraid that was going to fall in. <laughs> and I would never see it again. Oh, thank God it's not all rusted out in there. Proof chair, couch didn't, seat didn't catch on fire. Okay. So, now I need to make an L of these, it's thicker.
Some brand new spare steel in there. So I've changed my mind. I've decided to put the hole five inches up. So the hole will be here above the plate. So I'm going to slide the plate up underneath. There'll be a big hole here. And the idea is that you won't be able to see this weld and the seat buckle. That's the theory. So five inches up. Five inches up is the new number. Let me go mark this side. Now label these things right and left. Up and down. Yeah, they're like, I don't know, 14 days or whatever. Okay, I was going through some scrap steel and trying to figure out what to line the back of this with. Found some different diameters. And then I found a piece of, uh, just cut this down to size. A piece of, uh, I think it's two and three eighths, whatever this is. I just cut that nice and straight. It's not straight. How can that be not straight? Oh. Anyways, just cut down a piece. Check this out. It's almost the exact same radius, so I think uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this in half and then just flatten it a little bit. I was going to try to curve a piece of eighth inch to line the back of this, but now I think I'm just going to take a piece of round and flatten it in the press or with a hammer and try to make it curve to the back of that. Then I can put another layer on top of flat stock. Uh, so yeah, let's cut this thing down on the old uh, bandsaw.